Hi and welcome to another episode and what we've got here is, is a Commodore 128. Now I'm wanting to install a couple of things on the inside. A megabit 128, one megabyte version and an internal Wi-Fi modem thingy. But before I get around to getting the blue mat out and everything, let's go have a look at what the sponsor wants to say. Wait, hey, it's PCB way. They are a fully featured custom PCB service based in China. It doesn't matter if you're a hobbyist wanting a prototype or a company needing a full scale rollout. PCB way have got you covered. PCB way have a range of services with everything from PCB prototypes, CNC, 3D printing, and all the way back round again to PCB assembly. If you're not too sure how to bring your wonderful ideas to market, don't worry. PCB way now have EMS and OEM services, helping you to make sure not only a product is a good product, but a great product. Or, if you're a hobbyist who knows their resistors from their zeners, or someone who's just learning how to hold a soldering iron, PCB Way have a shared product page where you can either share your PCB designs or have some PCBs made up so you can learn how to solder like the best of them. All this starts from as little as five US dollars. Check out PCB Way today by finding our link in the description down below. Right, so we're back, the lid's off. We all know how to do that by now. Let's install the Wi-Fi bit because I have a feeling that's going to be easier. This is known as a Link 232 as far as I remember, as in RS-232. This is going to sit there. And then the other chip is going to actually sit there, I believe. I believe that's where that goes. Let's pull this chip out Put this in and then chip. There's also some oh, jumpy jump jump. There's some jumper wire type things as well to plug in, which I'll explain where they need to go when we've got the chips in place. So first things first, get this chip out. Get yourself a good chip puller. This one's okay. Granted there's other ones that are a lot more expensive and do, but um, so let's just bend this capacitor ever so slightly out of the way. Line it up. Tighten it up, because the whole idea is that that keeps tension on sideways, so when you're pulling, you are just pulling, you're not trying to um, grip at the same time. Let's do this. There we go. Let that out. There we go. Put that there for now. And the notch is at the bottom, which is fine because the notch on this is also there. Now I've got to be careful that this lines up properly because because the legs I want to make sure they're all in the correct place and it's kind of offset from them up above which makes sense of course because the legs all have to go somewhere but, um, firm equal pressure I think I think that's definitely in there now. And then we put this chip back in, making sure again that the notch is at the bottom. Well, that bit was easy enough. But now thinking about it, I maybe should have pulled that chip out first. I'm just going to double make sure where this chip, or this little circuit board, lives. Right, little circuit board, put that there for now as well. So just one moment while I double check if it's that one. I do believe it's the U36. Bits of information I'm trying to keep in my head and sadly I've forgotten. So it is that chip that needs to be removed. You might see it's a little bit wonky now compared to where it was. Then my computer crashed when I was doing it. 
don't want to give you the long story of why, but it did. Hopefully it doesn't do it this time. Anyway, chip was pulled properly using the chip puller. We have this, now we're putting this in. Thankfully the video sort of stopped before then. Let's make sure equal pressure everywhere. Oh, that's not exactly equal pressure everywhere, is it? Let's try again. There we go. Click, click. Now we have to mess around with the fancy wire. I'm going to put that in there so that it's looked after. I want to put that back someday. Probably not, but might want to. So, got this installed. That, I've written on the number two because the first chip was, I put number one. I believe that's the basic chip, isn't it? It seems to be working fine. Um, I do have a bit of a dodgy bit of a picture. I believe it's down to that thing that I installed, well, a year ago or months ago or whatever it was. Basically, I think it's ruining the picture. It just doesn't... I get... Um, well, it just doesn't look good. I've been on Twitter asking about it and it seems that someone else got one and that it was messed up as well. So, take that one out on a different video. But for now, let's get this hooked up. And the wires I've got are these. They come like this. The colours don't really matter. You just have to get them in the right place. And since it says up on it, I don't think you can really see. Can you see there? Whoa. Come on, focus. There we go. Dot slash IO and the word up, meaning this sticker is this way up. Come on. You may have noticed I've plugged in the output as well because I've had a bit of fun with this. It supposedly does different things and I was having problems and it was turned out it was partly me and partly the instructions, not really explaining instructions to newbies. So Let's do this first. I need the dot, and that can go on two places. It can go on this thing down here, or as you can see, it can go on pin six up there, and this can go on pin seven or pin ten, which happens to be in line with the letter C of the CN1 that it has there. So get that lined up and squish it down the best we can. I might even go better that way around. Just trying to keep it out of the way. We'll worry about it when we put the the lid back on properly. And then we have the other one for the megabit one two eight. And this goes here. And for those that understand these things, which is a little bit more than me, actually a lot more than me, the pin 6 is DE00, 10 is DF00, and this all the way down here, which is the 12th pin on this 16 pin chip, and it starts at 1 in the bottom right, goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then it skips over to the side, 9, blah, 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 16. So we need pin 12, which happens to be the fourth pin back down again from this direction. So fourth from the end while you're looking at it. This one's a bit fiddly. I find that it's easier to push it, that the hook is that way, you know, flat. Up, and then wiggle it around. I'm right-handed, so this is a bit... I was trying to do it so you could see, but... Um, in, and then rotate it 
and then wiggle it around and then make sure it's only touching that leg and put that there and that's everything wired up now now we need access to a terminal so we can get onto BBS's and we need one that supports SwiftLink and allows you to do the E the E00 or the E7 or uh, sorry the E00 the F00 or the 700 and I understand that's all hexadecimal but what that actually means to the Commodore itself not a clue so comment in the description down below no description comment in the comments that would be a good place to put it I'm so tired Ta, been at this for hours this month has just not been a good one right so <laughs> that's wired up let's hope everything goes fine um, so I just need the lid get the keyboard plugged in which is there get the LED for the power on and then there's an earth as well over here so I'll do that off camera because you don't need to see me waggle that around okay just to save a bit of time I haven't actually screwed everything back together yet definitely got power though let's move across so you can see the screen I've already got the a terminal loaded it's in 64k mode at the moment but this one I've managed to get working, I've never used the other ones before. Um, with this, when you're following the settings from the PDF, make sure that you follow it line by line by line, because it tells you to go to ASCII first and change the settings and then come back to Petsky. Basically, as I say, just follow it line by line. Don't skip anything, just do it, because if you do it out of order, it just doesn't work. Um, I've got it set up for being... DE00. Um, I swapped it across from the the D, uh, DF00. Um, I changed it back to DE00 because it's the only one I can seem to get to work. Um, what else with that? Uh, yes, when it comes to configuring the modem, there's a command that you have to type in. It'll show you different things, and for some reason, it's got the whole word. In square brackets giving you the idea you've got to type in the whole word in square brackets don't just type the first letter all by itself no square brackets and then that will give you the command to be able to fill in that rest information I know it seems a bit unfair that I'm not showing you do that but if I do that I'm gonna to have to blur it all out anyway so that you don't see my uh, Wi-Fi settings so it's just simpler to describe it to this and besides if you're following the video it's your own tough look if you skip that bit right Let's get on with actually getting a BBS loaded. So just the one that's in the demo is oldnet.com. And there we go, a BBS. Great fun to be able to just see around. Um, let's go to the internet, see what's there. There we go, just to prove that we're actually going to W. <laughs> right, can we go anywhere of interest? Next page. I'm assuming it's dot to come back out of it. Oh, we can type something. Let's type <laughs> Google and see what happens is there anything out there that's that simple? now that's obviously too complicated and I can't see how to come out of it myself because there we go. oh no there we go just took a while <laughs> isn't that cool that you can go off to Google through the BBS Amazing. You can even see the little blue light, maybe, uh, from the modem itself. So, really, that's kind of explaining how that gets going, because it really is an RTFM moment. There's far too much just to bore you by putting it all in here. Um, but in general, though, it is quite simple to actually install it. Just make sure your cables are tight and you've got the correct pins and placement and everything, and you should be okay. If you get stuck trying to get it working on... Or was it DF00 and D700? 
um, well, come along to the Discord and ask for help from someone else who's a lot more knowledgeable than me because I don't even know what those bits are. Um, but it, it might be that it interferes with something else if you don't actually change it across to the... I haven't tested everything yet. So let's go back to the Commodore 64 though. See what I mean about the bright white thing? It's all just messed up. Ignore that. I really am going to change that thing in there. In 128K mode, press help. Brings up a menu. Lots of different things thanks to the Mega 128. Right, let's press the at symbol. One thing about Commodore I've never liked is they put all this junk up making you think it's crashed, but actually it hasn't. So it's got a game in there. I can only assume all the rest of it loads, does things, a load of it. I don't understand what they do right now. But that's in there, it gives the 128 an awful lot more things to play around with. So, in the meantime though, let's move across to the big screen again and get you to have a look in the description for links towards Discord and Patreon. Don't forget to hit the like, subscribe and notification bell. But as always, happy gaming.